And then I'll do two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Executive Travel. Welcome to this week's edition of the Weekly Travel Alert. I'm Steve Glenn. I'm Paul Glenn. Every week we come to you with the Weekly Traveler, which is a summary of what we send out to 100,000 people, Paul, every week. And uh, this are your highlights of what's going on in the travel world. This week we have a very important list. It's our safety, 12 point safety checklist. If you're traveling international and more and more places around the world, you better be having your eyes open and think through what are some of the risks of traveling to those countries. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's go. The first headline in this week's edition of the Weekly Traveler reads, here is our 12-point safety checklist when traveling internationally, plus four new travel warnings for destinations many Americans travel to. Paul, uh, more and more countries, uh, the State Department lists travel advisories, and they list those in four different distinct areas. Number one is really exercise normal precautions. Number two is exercise increased caution really those two are kind of just keep your eyes open then you get to number three reconsider travel we're going to go through some countries that are on that list today and number four go travel there travel. and those are the obvious you're not going to want to go to israel now or the middle east and and just some of those countries afghanistan things that you know are so obvious that you really don't even need them to be on a list so with that what I would like to start is our 12-point safety checklist. Number one on that list reads, U.S. Medicare Medicaid does not apply overseas. Most seniors don't realize when they're traveling out of the country, your medical coverage doesn't cover you, nor does your health, U.S. health insurance. So if you've got Blue Cross Blue Shield, United Healthcare, those don't cover you. You gotta have travel insurance for that medical coverage because now we're seeing countries, and you were telling me about this, that you can't even use the hospital unless you prove how to pay it or prepay it in advance. I think that's a, that's a post-COVID thing. One of the challenges that came up when travel resumed after COVID was people would, would travel, they would get there, they'd get COVID, and then they'd be hospitalized for, for days or weeks, or they'd have to, to you know be stuck in a hotel room while they, they went through that seven day process before they could get cleared. Well, they didn't have the funds available to pay for that, the medical uh, needs. They didn't have the funds available to pay for that unplanned for hotel stay. So yeah, there are countries now that require proof of insurance. So they know that any of those additional expenses will be covered before you can go in. So that is a, a significant change, but that is, that's also something, you know, just the general key is, we're used to certain medical standards. Another thing that health insurance or travel insurance covers is getting you to a level of medical service that will meet those expectations. I remember 20, 25 years ago, we had an employee that went somewhere over in Europe. I want to say it was Greece and he was remote and he rented a, uh, a moped and he had an accident in some remote area. And the ambulance was the garbage truck with two sticks and a cot on the side. So, you know, the last thing you want to do is get yourself into a situation like that. You want to make sure that you're going to be up to the medical standards that you're used to that will get you back in the shape you want to be as quickly as possible. So if the one takeaway from today's presentation, you better take to the bank, and that's get travel insurance with medical coverage when you're going internationally. All right, number two, avoid walking or driving at night and avoid secluded places or situations. This is common sense. I would say this is what you do in Omaha, Nebraska, Chicago, New York City. Lincoln. Yeah. Lincoln, Nebraska. It's just have a little bit of common sense. Avoid walking or driving at night. It just... That's when the, the bad guys are out. You get yourselves into that situation you didn't want to didn't plan on. Yeah, and then also, you know, if you're going in pairs or two groups, if, the more people you have traveling with you, you mitigate the risk that way. Number three in the list of our 12-point safety checklist reads, keep traveling companions and family back home informed of your travel plans. If separating from your travel group, send a friend to your GPS location. If taking a taxi, take a photo of the taxi, the taxi license, 
and the taxi number and text it to a friend. Um, I can't tell you how many taxis I've been into. I snap a picture of the taxi license and I'm a big guy. Usually they're not going to, you know, come after me, but a, a single woman or in a cab or also even in, uh, in any kind of Uber, yeah. uh, I do that as well. So it, it's very common sense, but you can also put on GPS tracking on your I say Life 360, I think, is a common one. I know that's my, my family uses that, so we can keep tabs on should something happen. You know, as long as you've got that cell phone and that cell phone is is got some battery left to it, then people will be able to, to keep tabs on that. So as much as as much as I'm not a keep tabs on me kind of guy, you no. know, when you are traveling, especially alone, uh, there's something to being able to make it so that somebody could find you should something go awry. Uh, number four. Exercise increased caution when visiting local bars, nightclubs, and casinos. I've got a kind of common sense. Oh, well, I've got a, an example of this. This actually touches on one of the, the destinations we're going to hit on here in a little bit. I have a couple, a, a friend and an acquaintance that were down in Mexico uh, within the last, I want to say, year. And they had kind of wandered off the, the tourist trap and ended up in a, in a bar. And it was run by the cartel, and they ended up locking them in there, getting all of their credit cards, all their debit cards, their pins, all that stuff. So how I found out about it, I walked into my friend's shop, and he was on the phone with the credit card companies having to call and, and have everything canceled and go through that. Oh, so, wow. so, you know, to that, it's one of those where, you know, stick to where there are plenty of people. When you're in tourist areas, there's likely going to be more law enforcement presence because, you know, most of the destinations we're going to, that's a big part of their economy. So you stick to those areas and you're going to tend to be safer. You wander off that beaten path and wander into where the locals are in some place that's questionable. And you never know. But uh, now when I heard these guys' stories, it just made me cringe. I can't imagine uh, uh, being in that situation. I also had a friend even traveling to New Orleans. I'm going to be traveling there this week. And he was at a casino late in the night, had some winnings. He got mugged, almost killed him. And he dealt with that for the next 10 years of his life, being uh, severely uh, beaten and, oh, yeah. and his, all his money stolen. So that applies here even in the U.S. as well. Number five is common sense as well. Do not display signs of wealth, such as wearing expenses, watches, and jewelry. Leave that home, folks. You don't need to show the world you got the bucks. Guess who they're going to come after? Those guys are smart. They see the jingle and they're ready to jangle you. Yeah, I, uh, I enjoy nice watches and uh, it's always a, a mental thing for me. And I remember traveling a couple of years back with a friend and we were just going to Chicago to look at some, some architecture for another project we were working on. And he is a world traveler. He's a pilot and he wears Rolexes all the time. And instead of Ubering, he's like, let's just take the train. Well, if you've ever trained from O'Hare to downtown Chicago, <laughs> you go through some areas that I, I was worried. I, I was uh, concerned about, you know, whether some of these guys on here notice his watch. You know, we're victims. All they have to do is follow us off this train. So, so yeah, that is one where it's very simple, uh, but it's something that uh, we often don't think of. Because I, I will wear this watch about anywhere. Uh, but yeah, when you get something that is at that next level, you definitely want to uh, consider what you could be putting yourself into. Number six, be extra vigilant when visiting banks or ATMs. So this kind of goes back to, you know, with the watches and jewelry, you know, when somebody sees you walking away from an ATM, they know you've got something in your pocket. So yeah. I think you just have to be very cautious of that. Um, and and who's, who's around? Who's watching what you're doing? Yeah. It, you know, I always try to go into a bank area that has some security around that ATM. Go into the bank building. Yeah, go into the bank building if you can. But that's, that's once again, common sense is uh, ATM and cash. If you've been in an ATM, you've got cash when you walk away usually. So number seven in this week's edition of the Weekly Travel Alert, sponsored by Executive Travel. I'm Steve Glenn, the chairman, and Paul is the CEO of Executive Travel. We do this every week and have over 100,000 people to get our weekly travel. And thanks for joining us today. And it reads, avoid use of jet skis and other water sports activities as many have very low uh, safety checks or certifications. And we're seeing that specifically in like Jamaica. They, we're gonna talk a little bit about them later, but 
Uh, they're having a jet ski issues with safety and people are getting hurt. There's even been some people killed on them. So you got to be very vigilant when you're in these water sports destinations. A lot of those, a lot of that equipment has never been checked and has no security tied to it. I would say probably parasailing and other activities like that would be other oh, ones. Uh, you know, it's, you got to wonder if there are regulations and, and checks on that stuff. So number eight, do not physically resist any robbery attempt. Pickpockets are everywhere. Keep your valuables in your front pockets and not in your backpacks. So well, I'll tell you, these... Uh, these pickpocket guys, especially in Europe, they are like magicians. And we've had many people traveling in groups have their passport and their wallets and in their backpack. And you know, when you get a lot of people standing on a street corner waiting to go, yeah, and they'll get bumped and they work in teams yeah. and that one will bump you, talk to you while the other one's opening your backpack and pulling it out. So you just have to, once again, be very vigilant. Think about what your surroundings are. And put, I always like to put my wallets in my front pockets and maybe my passport, my other one. I always put my hands on them. That's, you know, that's and touch it. Yeah. You know, well, I think, uh, you know, this is one of those things. Also think about the, the picture you're painting. You know, if you're that, you've got your hands in your pockets. That's a, a great situation. But I had an instance probably almost. 30 years ago, where I had landed in Chicago, I rode the train downtown, I uh, got off the train, and I had my, my bag, and I had a, a briefcase, this was back in the days of briefcases, I was going to a training, and so I was an easy target, and the guys came up to me, and I ended up giving them everything I had in my wallet, luckily it was like $80 or something like that, but you know, it was, it was a, a matter of do I want them to run off with my bag that's got a computer and all that stuff? And, or, or do I give up the $80 I have? So it also goes to think through what you have for the resources they would want and minimize maybe what they would have available. Or, or, you know, if you've got a money clip and a wallet, you know, just have 50 bucks in that money clip and that's go right. to your wallet. So yeah. different thought processes yeah. there. Make it easy for them to get away uh, with, with something. With something. Yeah. With something, but not everything. <laughs> Well, I hope we're not scaring everybody. We're just trying to give some ideas for safety, and especially for some of these countries that are on the list of warnings from the U.S. State Department. Now, the next item we have is number nine, be aware of your surroundings and keep a low profile. You know, the higher profile you take, the more chance somebody's going to see you, and that's what they don't want. You don't want the bad guys. You want to kind of take a low profile. That's just real, real common sense. All right, number 10, enroll in the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program, the STEP program, to receive alerts and make it easier to locate you in an emergency. And that's just basically through the State Department, and you notify them, hey, I'm, I'm in... Uh, I'm in Jordan. I'm in Jordan. So there's an event. Hyatt, or whatever you might say, something like that. Number 11 on this week's... 12-point safety checklist. We have prepare a contingency plan for emergency situations. And we've even put in our weekly travel alert a little uh, checklist that you can go through for those. And that could be, you know, no, no flights to the airport. Have an Uber app loaded on your on your uh, mobile device. Those types of things. Know who you can quickly call for emergency, perhaps even have that in your phone. Consulates information, and things like that. You yeah. bet, you bet. Number 12, we've got visit the CDC page for the latest travel health information related to your travel. So I think as we have come off of a uh, challenging couple of years with COVID, you know, that's a ever moving target with what's going on in different parts of the world. And there's a little more sensitivity to it. So if you want to know if there are requirements or if there are any high alerts that you need to be aware of, uh, go to that travel health information page. And this is a lot of people visited this during COVID because one country may require a mask. One may require uh, vaccinations, vaccinations yep. another a vaccination card and how long you had to stay you know, if you caught COVID over there and those types of things. So those are something we basically, most of these are kind of new in the last 10 years to kind of be vigilant. 
we're not trying to scare anybody. We just want to have your trip be safe and secure and one that you come back with great memories, not bad ones. Now, Paul, the next list we have is a list of four top destinations Americans travel to that are on a high point system, high alert with uh, the U.S. State Department. So we want to bring that to you in this week's weekly travel alert. Number one, Jamaica. It just popped on the list at number three. That's pretty high. That's basically reconsider travel to Jamaica. So there's a lot of violent crime. There's armed robbery, sexual assaults, and homicides. And uh, usually what I tell people is if you're staying at these all-inclusives, you're in, in a pretty protected environment. But if you get outside of that, uh, we there's a lot of things going on in Jamaica, and a lot of it is poverty-driven and drug-driven. That's, I think that's the reality. It's been like that for 30 years or more. I remember the first time we went to Jamaica, I think I was 14 years old. And uh, some of the things that I was witness to were scary to see. I mean, you don't realize the poverty uh, that, that is there, which drives people to obviously do things that uh, they wouldn't do if they were in a different economic situation. So, but it is to that, you know, we have many groups that will go to Jamaica and then will go to some of the other places on this list. If you abide by kind of the safety checklist that we've already gone through, and again, if you stay in the tourist areas, you know, the Mexico's has Cancun as the hotel zone. Cabo's got kind of the, the, the hotel zone as well. So if you stay in those areas, you're going to tend to have a lower risk uh, because law enforcement will have a higher presence. But still, you want to be aware of the potential so you can have that heightened alert. Talk about a good segue right into number two on our list is Mexico. Now, they differ, depending on what area you're traveling to in Mexico, there are different areas and they each have a different risk ratio from one to four. If you go on our weekly traveler this week, you'll find you can click on a map. And the map is the whole world, and you can zero into Mexico and say, what section here is high risk, what's low risk? Of course, Cancun and Cabo are moderate to rated number two on the list. Uh, you know, be aware. Those are generally safe zones or safe areas. But if you get outside of it, Monterey and other areas, it can get very, very risky very quickly. Now, stay at your resort. Stay in that hotel zone. So... Make sure, yeah, you're in a position that you're protected. Now, just this week, number three came onto the list of the State Department, and that's the Bahamas. You know, Nassau, Freeport, all those places that all those cruise ships go into, suddenly there's become a lot of crime. They're at level two increased caution, and especially in Nassau and Freeport, and they warn against jet skis, and get this, shark attacks hmm. in Nassau. So there must be a movement of sharks in there that normally, you know, the, the water sports and everything, there's not a problem, but they've had shark attacks and people die from that. So that's in, very interesting that the Bahamas is on our list, top four list. Yeah, I don't remember the last time that I saw the Bahamas on there, if it's ever been on there before. So yeah. that mm -hmm. was intriguing. And last but not least in this week's Weekly Travel Alert, we went through the list of our 12-point safety checklist, and now we're talking about the top four areas that Americans travel to that may surprise them that they're on a U.S. Department's uh, list of two, three, and, and some of them four. But level three is China, which means uh, they um, are recommending that you literally reconsider travel. And this is surprising, or maybe not so much, but China is... Uh, high risk levels of wrongful detentions, okay, number one, arbitrary enforcement of laws, and this one's kind of scary, exit bans, they won't let Americans out of there. So there's a lot of risk traveling to China, and it's because they basically keep Americans, so they, they there's well, a lot of political, yeah, a lot of political know, leverage risk. that comes to that and in our current uh, political state of the world. So. Yeah, so I... It's interesting that China's reached a level three, which is... So you typically go to China twice a year, right. April and October. Yeah. Have you... Are you changing that due to this, or... I don't know. It depends. Uh, we usually go to the Canton Fair, which is a giant fair in Guangzhou, China, the largest uh, trade show in the world. And usually we figured that because we're going there, they're not going to give us too much trouble, but... We sometimes go outside of that to factories and other places. So, so far, this hasn't deferred us 
a map your brother and I usually go there twice a year so we'll see what happens well, I think maybe. the nice thing is you've also got somebody that speaks Mandarin that's usually there with you right. so it can kind of keep you abreast of what's going yeah. on but amazing thing when you enter China you you have your iris uh, taking pictures of and they have cameras on every street they know where I'm at all the time Every minute in China, they know when you enter the hotel, they probably have security cameras in the rooms. I don't know. So you have no privacy in China. No. No privacy at all. They know where you're at. Now, to that, though, we do want to note Hong Kong is not at that level. For no. Me. So Hong Kong, amazing city. It should be on everybody's bucket list, in my opinion. But they're at a level two. So, you know, just pretty much standard caution. Um, but, yeah, so that is something where, and I know a lot of times, especially here recently, is as flights haven't been put back at the levels they were pre-COVID, is you would have to fly into Hong Kong and then train up to Guangzhou. Um, but yeah, so Hong Kong is definitely something that's still, still worth exploring. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this week's Weekly Travel Alert, uh, sponsored by Executive Travel. Every week, Paul and I sit in the saddle. We share with you some ideas about the travel industry. Hopefully this week you have enjoyed our 12-point safety checklist and some of the four countries that should cause you pause or at least consideration if you plan to go there. And if you do, how you want to keep yourself safe. Thanks, I'm Steve Glenn. And I'm Paul Glenn. Please like, subscribe, share, and add any comments or questions below so we can hit the topics that you want us to hit on in future episodes. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.